Next thing I want to talk to you about, if you want to enjoy your life, we're going to spend a little time parked here, so. Slow down. Now, I had this thought today. We talk about walking with God. <laughs> yes, I'm walking with God. I want to walk with God. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. But I can tell you, if we're going to walk with God, then we've got to learn how to live in God's rhythm. And he's not multitasking. <laughs> and he's not in a hurry, as we have all found out. How many of you have found out God is not in a hurry? <laughs> Amen. Now, we're going to take a little quiz to see if maybe you're doing things a little too fast. <laughs> Do you check your phone the first thing in the morning <laughs> for text, emails, and other social media messages? Do you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and check your phone? <laughs> Come on, how many of you do that? You check your phone in the middle of the night yeah, go ahead, tell the truth. Because you're just so afraid somebody may be trying to get a hold of you. And goodness knows we are so important that we have to be available to every human on the planet 24-7. I mean, we get frantic if we leave the house and forget our phone. That's like major disaster. Here's a good one. Are you able to have lunch with a friend and not look at your phone the entire time you're with them? <laughs> you know what? I am so tired of trying to have fellowship with people that are answering text messages while they're talking to me. I mean, it is rude with a capital R. Amen? Now, if something important happens and you can say, I'm so sorry, this, or, you, or you might even say, you know, I'm expecting a message that I may have to answer, but if it's not on the urgent list, <laughs> let's respect one another enough to start giving people our full attention. I really just don't like trying to talk to people while they're... Okay, I'm gonna get a lot of stuff off my chest tonight. <laughs> you know, it's so much fun when you're in my position, you can just get up here and just vent all you want to. Do you get frustrated when the elderly person in front of you is driving too slow? <laughs> but when you check, they are actually driving the speed limit. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, you might know it'd be an old lady. <laughs> well, you better watch out. David said, once I was young and now I'm old, it happens to everybody. <laughs> Wherever you're at, you're on your way. <laughs> Do you find yourself lying in bed in the morning thinking of all the things that you want to get done that day and you're actually frustrated and stressed out before you ever put your feet on the floor? Do you choose the restaurant or the coffee shop that you want to go to based on which one has Wi-Fi? <laughs> Are you normally doing several things at one time? <laughs> have you rushed around so much that now you have such a habit of rushing that you find yourself rushing when you don't need to rush? <laughs> I find myself hurrying up brushing my teeth. <laughs> Honestly, you can just get in such a...
And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I mean, <laughs> I've been working a while on trying to slow down because I'm, I, I'm one step ahead of where I'm at most of the time. I mean, I get out of the car before it comes to a full stop. So, uh, and I, I'm not joking either. It's like, So I'd appreciate your prayers because <laughs> I've done some really dumb stuff because of hurrying. For example, I poured the water from my coffee pot into the area where the coffee beans go. <laughs> Boy, did I make a mess. I've done that more than once. I've made a few pots of coffee in my life and forgot to put the coffee pot under the brewer. I frequently try to get out of the car become, before it comes to a full stop. One time this year while I was out on the road, you know, when you travel like I do, sometimes you get up in the middle of the night and you forget where you're at. And so I went to the bathroom, got a little mixed up, thought I was sitting on the toilet, was sitting on the bathtub. Now, wait a minute, I didn't go to the bathroom in the bathtub. But I fell over backwards and hit my head on the bathtub. And it hurt. One night I got up in a hotel and I walked into the wall and it was a mirrored wall and I about scared myself half to death. I went, ah! I thought somebody was in the room. There's no need to go to a comedy club. Just go to church. <laughs> and then just, just three more things. A lot of you have probably done this. Run around the house looking for your cell phone while you're talking on it. run around frantically looking for your glasses and couldn't find them because you were wearing them. <laughs> and then the last one, and I do this often, it, it really means that I do not keep my mind all the time on what I'm doing. I'm, a, you know, I'm off in China somewhere or India or the next conference or meditating on what I'm going to do on TV or something. And, and uh, Women like to change their purses sometimes, and so you get out the purse you want to put your stuff into. You take everything out of the purse that you want to empty. And I have stood there then and put everything back in the same purse. <laughs> and one day I did it twice. <laughs> I'm like, Joyce, get a grip. <laughs> Oh, and that's just the beginning of the stories I could tell you, so. But here's my point. I need prayer. <laughs> and I suspect you do too. <laughs> we not only need to slow down outside, we need to slow down inside. And I think that's possibly even where we need to start because if you slow down inside, you will slow down on the outside. But as long as our thoughts are rushing from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing to thing, we're not going to enjoy much of life. You know, I think a lot of times we have bad days because we're just frantically rushing through every day and we're not really enjoying anything that God's trying to provide for us. I honestly think there's a lot of awesome things that happen in each one of our days, things that God's trying to show us, things that he's trying to speak to us. We can't walk with God if we're going to be in a hurry all the time. I mean, can you honestly imagine Jesus leading the disciples in the kind of lifestyle we live? <laughs> Come on, guys, get up, get up, get up. We've got to get over to Jerusalem, get this meeting started. Come on, let's go, 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 go. Now, up. <laughs> no time for breakfast. Let's go. Five important ways to slow down. How many of you want to slow down? Resist the temptation to overcommit and overextend yourself. 
<laughs> Write that down, she said, yeah. Learn how to say no. And understand when you say no, people are not gonna like it. So if you're gonna run your life led by the Holy Spirit, I can just tell you right now, you may have to make a few folks mad. But if people don't want you to be led by the Spirit, then they are not your friend anyway. Resist saying that you'll do things that you know in your heart that you really shouldn't do just because you don't want to upset a friend. Now, I'm not saying that we, we all have times when we need to do things that we'd maybe rather not do because we just know it's the right thing to do or because it is somebody that's been really good to us and, and we want to bless them. I, that's different than knowing that you don't have peace about it, that it's not something that you should be doing and going ahead and doing it anyway. I can tell you, if that's what you're doing, you will not have a good day because God will not help us do anything that he did not call us to do. Seriously think before you commit to anything. Take time. Seriously commit, think, what is this really going to take out of me? How much time am I actually really going to have to put into this? You know, some things can sound so easy on the front side. And then you get into it and you think, what in the world have I gotten myself into? Well, I think we need to check some things out a little bit further. Come on. I know, listen, I've about killed myself in the past saying yes to favors for people in ministry and taking speaking engagements just because people said God told them I was the one that had to come. And I finally got to the point where I'm thinking, well, God didn't told me until he tells me I'm not going. I don't like it when people pull the God told me card. We need to stop doing that to people. Well, God told me that you're the one that's supposed to go. Well, if he wants me to do something, he's gonna tell me, and then, you know, we'll have a confirmation together, but he's not gonna tell you what I should do, and then me do it while I'm miserable. <laughs> Pay attention to the pace of your life. I eat fast. Of course, I do everything pretty fast, but I'm learning. My gosh, I had a health doctor tell me that you should chew each bite of food 20 times. I'm thinking, Lord have mercy, there is no way. I mean, my jaw would fall off. Have you ever tried to chew each bite of food 20 <laughs> Well, I hope I've learned my lesson. I think God's trying to get a point across to me because Twice this year, I have been eating so fast that I got choked to the point where it actually really scared me. <laughs> You're all looking at me like, are you sure you're qualified to teach us? Listen, the best way I know to teach people is to be honest with them, amen? Now, you know, people who are busy and have a lot to do and have a lot of responsibility, I mean, you can't just go through life and this, you know. <laughs> but you gotta find a healthy balance. I think this is the guideline. Whatever God's called you to do, he's built you for it. And some people are always gonna move faster than other people, but when it starts stressing you out, and you start not enjoying life because of it, and you start doing really dumb and sometimes dangerous things because you're in too big of a hurry. Come on, how many of you have ever done something really almost dangerous just from being in too big of a hurry? Okay. 
Well, I have a friend who moves rather slowly. And it doesn't really do much good to try to get this person to hurry because they're just not going to. And I love this person, but I'll tell you the truth. Sometimes I just get annoyed. It's like... <laughs> I used to think that God wanted her to speed up, but now I've finally figured out he wants me to slow down. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that sometimes God will put you with people <laughs> that maybe, maybe, even though they irritate you, maybe you need to be a little more like them? I don't know. You know, I've always got a few people in my life that are just really super sweet. I mean, like dripping with sweetness. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Yes, dear. Could you please? I've changed. <laughs> I mean, when God just keeps shoving the same thing in your face over and over and over for 25 years, finally you get it. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that, that God will put you around people that just, they're just there to be this sweet little nice example to you? <laughs> oh, Dave is so patient. He is so patient that it just annoys me sometimes. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you the honest to God's truth. I've been married to the man 50 years, and in 50 years, I've heard him say two times he didn't like somebody. <laughs> now, you know, that is not normal. <laughs> I could come up with two a day. Oh, I'm so thankful for the Word of God. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't get to preach, because see, now I got to study all the time. Oh my gosh, God has changed me so much. He has changed me so much. I'm actually really nice now. <laughs> well, I hope the same thing happens to some of you. Okay, listen, how many of you move real fast and you're in a relationship with somebody that's slow? <laughs> Come on, we're, we're about to make a point here. How many of you are a little bit, you know, more mouthy and harsh and you're married to somebody that's kind of quiet and where else? How many of you are impatient and you're in a relationship with somebody that's just like so patient about driving you bonkers? Okay, does everybody see what I'm saying? Does anybody in the building see what I'm saying? God wants us to learn from one another. That's why he doesn't give us people. I mean, how can we learn to love everybody? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Now, just in case you wonder if I'm just making a lot of this up, the Bible's full of scriptures about not hurrying. Proverbs 19:2. Desire without knowledge is not good, and to be over hasty is to sin and miss the mark. <laughs> wow. Boy, do we make some big mistakes when we get in a big hurry. Proverbs 14, 29, he who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is hasty of spirit exposes and exalts his folly. Proverbs 18, 13, he who answers a matter before he hears the facts, <laughs> it's folly to him, which means foolishness. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 4, 5, so do not make any hasty or premature judgments before the time comes when the Lord comes again. Let's renew our commitment to be really led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Honestly, if we'll follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we can avoid some real problems. I remember just an example that I'll share with you because I like practical examples. 
I was out shopping one time and I was getting really tired, but I had not done everything I wanted to do. <laughs> I knew in my heart I should go home because the stuff would be there another day, but I was determined I was going to get it done. So I ignored the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Just kept shopping, ended up getting so tired that I got grouchy. Then when I went home, I started mistreating people because I was tired and I was grouchy. And then when they said, what's wrong with you? I was like, well, I'm tired. Well, whose fault was it that I was tired? It was my fault that I was tired. Then after being grouchy and cranky, then I started feeling guilty because I was grouchy and cranky. Come on, do we see the pit we're crawling into here? When the whole thing could have been avoided if I would have simply followed what the Holy Spirit was saying to me and just used wisdom and said, you know what, I'm really getting tired. I know I need to go home. Is anybody in this building hearing me tonight? So I had a bad evening <laughs> that I could have avoided. Stay in control of your time. Do what leads to peace. Okay, now let's remember, if we want to walk with God and live a life that's full of adventure, we need to learn to trust Him and really slow down and learn to live in God's rhythm, not this fast-paced thing that the world tries to push us into.